In this video, we're going to take a look at using the Black-Scholes option pricing model to value options. Now, in order to follow along this video, it's probably worthwhile to stop, pause the video for a second, and go get a couple of files that I posted up on Google Docs. I use the Tiny Earl to keep the address a little bit smaller. But if you go the Brocker dash standard normal table is just a standard normal distribution table that we'll use as part of the calculation. The BSOPM file is just a formula sheet with the Black Scholes option pricing model formulas on it. And the last is a spreadsheet. After we walk through this by hand, you might find it's a lot easier to use an Excel spreadsheet if you want to do that. This form, or the spreadsheet that I made up walks through the Black-Scholes option pricing model. You plug in the inputs and it spits out the value of the options as well as some other information that might be useful as you get into options analysis. So if you want to pause right now, go get those files and then come back. We'll start the video. Now when I started this video, first thing I did in the setup was take a look at some current option prices and this video was made around early June 2011 and I went and looked June 4th at Netflix. Netflix was currently trading for $273.40 and you can see the different options, some calls and some puts, widely different prices. Where do those prices come from? How do traders decide what's a fair value to pay for an option? One of the basic models is the Black-Scholes option pricing model. And that's what we're going to walk through in this video. Now, as we discussed in a previous video when we talked about intrinsic value and speculative premium, option prices are a function of five factors. The underlying stock price, the exercise or strike price for that option, the time to expiration, the volatility of the underlying stock, and the risk-free rate of interest. And those are the five factors that are going to go into the Black-Scholes option pricing model. So we're going to take all five of those factors and use the Black-Scholes option pricing model to figure out what the option is worth. We're going to start with the value of a call. Now, the formulas for the value of the call look pretty messy. And the Black-Scholes option pricing model was developed using stochastic calculus. I've actually w seen the proof and walked through it once before, but mathematically it's a little bit beyond my skill level. So just let's trust these guys and assume that all these formulas are valid. We start with the value of the call, which takes the stock price times an area from the standard normal distribution table minus the exercise price divided by E to the risk-free rate times time. Now this looks like a big mess here, but really all that is is a present value. It's the present value of the exercise price discounted back to today at the risk-free rate of return. The difference between this and normal discounting that you might do on a financial calculator is Black-Scholes used a continuous discounting model so this E stands for the exponential. And then we take this multiply by ND2 which is the another area under the standard normal distribution table. Now in order to get D1 or the value of the call we need D1 first and so we've got a formula for D1 that looks like this. It's the natural log of the current stock price divided by the strike price plus the risk-free rate plus 0.5 times the standard deviation of the underlying stock squared. All that times time divided by the standard deviation times the square root of time. Now a couple things I want to mention here. First, whenever you see this T for time in the Black-Scholes option pricing model, it's going to be the number of years. So if we have an option with one month to expiration, that's one twelfth of one year. 
So we always have to plug that in as the number of years. Typically it will be less than one, it will be some fraction or a decimal. The other thing is the volatility. Now we don't know what that volatility really is, so this is our best guess of how volatile the stock is going to be over the upcoming time period. But we want to make sure we plug that in as a decimal. So if we forecast a standard deviation of 25%, that would go in as 0.25. And our last formula finally have something relatively short, D2, and that's used up here in the second half of the value of the call formula. That is just D1 minus the standard deviation times the square root of time. Now, in order to walk through the Black-Scholes option pricing model, the best way is to set up an example and go through that. So let's start with an example. We've got a stock that's currently valued at $62, so our stock price is 62. That's the P0 in our formulas. The exercise or strike price is $60. Since we're looking at a call, this option is currently in the money. If it expired today, we would exercise it. It has an intrinsic value of $2. So we know the value of the option is going to be higher than $2, but how much higher? What is the speculative premium that should be attached to this option? That's what we're going to find with the Black-Scholes option pricing model. Time to expiration is 40 days. Now remember, this is fraction of a year, so when we plug that into the formula, it's going to be 40 over 365. 40 days out of 365 days per year in order to set up time. Volatility, 32%. And again, when we plug that in, to our formulas. It's going to be 0.32 and the risk-free rate of 4%. And when we plug that into our formulas, it's going to be 0 0.04. So our percentages have to be plugged into the decimals as or into the formula as decimals, and time should be as a fraction of a year. Now that we have that set up, let's go through the calculations. When we set up our initial D1, you'll see the formula here, the natural log of this current stock price divided by the strike price plus the risk-free rate plus 0.5 times the standard deviation squared times time divided by the standard deviation times the square root of time. Now it's just a matter of getting out your calculator and walking through these calculations. Take 62 divided by 60, press the natural log button on your calculator, you'll come up with 0 .03279. 0 0.04, just carry down. 0.32 squared times 0.5 gives us 0 0.0512. And 40 divided by 365 it's going to give us 0 0.10959. Now 0 0.32, 40 divided by 365, take the square root, gives us 0 0.33104. So all we're doing is we move down this step, it's a little bit of the calculations. Again, more calculations. Taking 0 0.04 plus 0 0.0512 gives us 0 0.0912 times the 0 0.10959. And our 0.32 times 0.33104 gives us 0.10593. Last step, add all this up. We get 0 0.04279 divided by the 0 0.10593, and that gives us 0 0.404. So our D1 is 0 0.404. Now we need D2. D2, remember, was our much simpler formula, just D1 minus the standard deviation times the square root of time. So we've got D1 here, what we solved for in the last page, times the standard deviation, or minus the standard deviation times the square root of time. Again, just go through the calculations, 0 0.404 minus 0 0.10593 gives us 0.298. Now, we're going to have to look these values up under a standard normal distribution table. 
And the standard normal distribution table that I've set up carries everything out to two decimal places. And you might have went and printed that out from Google Docs. You can see here what we've got. Standard normal distribution table. We've got column of D's, column of ND1's. And we want to find 0 0.40 and 0 0.3. So if we look at that, 0 0.40 on this gives us a value of 0 0.6554. 0 0.30 gives us a value of 0 0.6179. So those are ND1 and ND2. Once we have those, now we can go back to the value of the call formula. If you remember when we introduced the formulas, we said that the value of the call, let me just find that formula here real quick. The value of the call was equal to P0 times ND1, which we've now looked up present value of the exercise price, and ND2. So we set those in, P0 times our ND1, present value of the exercise price, exercise price is 60. To get the present value, we take the risk-free rate times time, press the E button on your calculator, it's referred to as the exponential should be a little italicized E somewhere on your calculator or something like E to the X. So figure out what X is and then press your E to the X button. And then we multiply by ND2. Go through the calculations. 62 times 0.6554 is 40.63. Our exponential is 1.004393. So 60 divided by point zero or divided by 1.004393 gives us 0.6179 or 59.74. Now here's a little tip. Sometimes I have my students do this so they can see that there's nothing mystical going on with that present value of the exercise price. Just take your financial calculator, set it to 365 periods per year so you're using daily compounding and then 40 as your N. Our risk-free rate was 4%, so set that up as your interest rate. We're solving for the present value. The payment, there's no annuity stream here, so we're going to zero out the payment. And then we'll enter our future value, which is our strike price of 60. Solve for PV. And that should come up real close to the 5974. My guess is it's going to be within a penny of that 5974 because all we're doing here is finding a present value using continuous compounding. Daily and continuous compounding are going to be very close. So 40.63 minus 36.91 gives us $3.72. Now, if you're watching this video, I strongly encourage you to go through the calculations, practice this, and make sure that you can get the answers. Next, we're going to have the value of the put. But I'm going to stop here and save that for our next video. So in the next video, it'll be real short. We'll walk through that value of the put calculation.